What's the old saying about when life gives you lemons, you try to make lemonade? Uh, frankly, I think a lot of times that's just overly positive bullshit. Because a lot of times, life will give you lemons, and no matter what you do, there's still going to be lemons. And we could sit there and put all the positive spins we want on it. We could sit there and try to be as optimistic and hopeful as possible. But sometimes shit ain't changing. You ain't taking that lemon and making it into lemonade. It just ain't happening. I think what's more appropriate to say when it comes to life is two things. Is that one, life isn't fair. Because it's not. It's just tough shit sometimes. And number two is that bad things happen to good people. And no matter how much anybody tries to sit there and say, well, karma always collects and eventually those good people are rewarded. No, they're not. And it's ridiculous for anybody to assert that that is the case. More often than not, it does seem like bad things happen to good people, which can sometimes lead you to question certain things about what you've been taught and what you understand about certain beliefs and faiths and what have you. Now, I look at somebody like Daniel Bryan, and to me, this is clearly an instance of life not being fair. And you know, also just a simple matter of uh, bad things happening to a good dude, a good person. I mean, this is bad for him. This is really bad for him. Now we're looking at another situation where Daniel Bryan could be missing extended time due to more neck problems. Could be permanent. Who knows? But you got to feel bad for him because this is a guy that has worked his ass off, paid his dues, clawed, scratched, fought his way up the ladder to get to the very top. This is a guy that had a dream, he pursued his dream, and in some ways ultimately achieved his dream. It's something that so many of us only wish that we had the courage to do. It's something that so many of us sit on the outside looking in and like to crap on that individual for pursuing and chasing that dream, but we ultimately find ourselves to be very jealous of that individual when they actually pay the dues and put in the time to ultimately achieve their dream. And life is very cruel in this way. Now that you've got somebody like a Daniel Bryan who has worked his ass off, who's been so many things, who's done so many things, who's worked for so many years to get to this spot, now that he's actually reached the pinnacle of his dream, it's like it's being all taken away from him. It's just cruelly being yanked away from him. Life is sitting there and saying, up yours, I win again, as life ultimately does. And... You know, it sucks, and I really feel bad for Daniel Bryan. I really, truly do, because it's unfortunate, and it's unfair, but that's the way shit goes, sadly. It's just, you know, at some point in time, you have to start wondering if it's time to let the dream die. You have to wonder if sometimes it's best to realize when it's time to walk away. You may not want to, but it might be wise to recognize when you have to. And I think that's the ultimate question that somebody like Daniel Bryan faces in this particular case now, is should he retire? I mean, now look, I'm not sitting there and hoping for it and wishing for him to retire, but we have to be honest here. You're talking about a guy that has put a lot of wear and tear on his body throughout the years, taken a lot of physical pounding, beat his ass up, in order to get where he was. At some point in time, those chickens are going to come home to roost. At some point in time, that's going to catch up with you. As you've heard said over the years when it comes to wrestling, you've only got so many flips, so many kicks, so many bumps, so many spots that you could take before your body says, that's enough, no more. And I truly start to think that Daniel Bryan has now reached that point with his body, fair or not. Some people, it comes earlier before they ever even get close to WWE. Some people, they never have that issue and everything is fine, and they manage to skirt off all these years without ever having to worry about it. But you know, injuries are a part of the deal when it comes to that chosen profession. And that risk is always there to do yourself some permanent damage. And I just wonder if Daniel Bryan has reached that point where maybe he needs to start focusing on quality of life post-WWE and taking a look at how he's lived the first 30 plus years of his life and maybe strongly consider and think about how he's going to live the next 30 plus years of his life. I mean, here's a guy that's married. 
I would maybe think at some point in time may want to have kids start a family. You know, if that's the case, do you want to sit there and risk not being able to be a dad that can play with his kids in 10 or 15 years when you're in your mid-40s because you're walking around with permanent damage caused by neck injuries that you didn't properly take care of and then you put potentially the rest of your body at risk because you're trying to compensate for those injuries. You know, I'm not sitting here trying to pretend to think or know what Daniel Bryan is going through or what's running through his mind. But at some point in time, I would have to think, you know, part of the purpose of getting married, you would usually think would be to have a family at some point in time. And I would have to envision at some point in time, him and Bree may indeed want to have kids and start a family. You know, he's made a lot of money. Sure, he would love to make a lot more money. But at some point in time, is it just about the money? And at some point in time, is that money really that important? And when I look at the situation for somebody like Daniel Bryan, I start to wonder how important that money would really be. Because what good does it do to make a lot more money for several more years, maybe put your body through a bunch of shit for the next five or seven years, to where you get to the point where you're 45 and 50, you look like one of those broken down, beaten down, wheelchair bound wrestlers that so many of us mock, talk about, and like to make fun of because of all the crap they did to their bodies over the years. You know, there are opportunities there, I would have to imagine, for Daniel Bryan to be able to step away, to be able to do something else, to be able to do something that wouldn't potentially put his body at risk, especially his long term health and future as a husband, potentially as a father, what have you. I don't know if Daniel Bryan's going to retire. I don't know guarantee that he should retire. But we have to be honest here. I mean, we're talking about the second straight year that he's being pulled out of action for an unknown length of time due to a neck issue. I mean, how much more do you really want to risk? How many more chances do you really want to take when you start dealing with the neck, this is not like you have a bum shoulder. This is not like you have a bad knee that you have to get a patella tendon surgery or you have to replace the MCL or the ACL or you don't have a dislocated kneecap. When you talk about your neck, this could potentially cause you serious issues, impact your quality of life on a day-in, day-out basis. Talking about nonstop neck pain, obviously, perhaps back pain all the time. Perhaps it wouldn't even be an issue because you get to a point where you cause yourself so much damage that you're wheelchair bound and you can't feel anything below your waist or perhaps below your shoulders. You know, is that really worth it? You know, there's a part of me that says you pursue your dream and you go after your dream and then if there are some long-term consequences and repercussions, you prepare yourself for dealing with that, but you might not necessarily change the path that you chose because you ultimately set out to do what you wanted to do. And in this case, in Daniel Bryan's specific situation, he clearly has set out to do what he's ultimately done. This is a guy that's made it to the top, made it to the pinnacle. He's main evented WrestleMania. He's made a lot of money. You know, he's done a lot of things. But now he does have an opportunity, perhaps, to walk away before he does himself some real irreparable damage. Personally, I hope that Daniel Bryan does retire. Because here's a guy that's put his body on the line for years. You know, I'm not going to sit there and selfishly say, hey, fuck it all. I want him to perform for me for another five or ten years just so that way I could sit there and get my cheap thrill. And then whatever the fuck happens to him 15, 20 years down the road, I don't give a shit about. No, it ain't that serious. It ain't that important. You know, if, the, if it's going to be something that could potentially cause him issues... Frankly, I don't see how you can call yourself a Daniel Bryan fan if you didn't want him to do what was best for him and potentially retire. I hope he does. I really do. Because it's best for him. It just This is the second straight year you've had neck issues. This is not like a knee or a hip or a shoulder. You know, nothing like that. We're talking about your neck. And obviously, you know it's bad when for the second straight year you're talking about the injury, it's taking you out of action, you can't even determine a specific length of time that you're potentially going to be out of said action. I mean, the dude's obviously in bad shape in a bad way. And, you know, 
even from his standpoint, is going to get to a point where he's going to keep wanting to come back. He's going to push himself hard to come back. And then it's just going to continue to be a dick tease. He'll get to a certain point. It's like he's done the last two years, and then it gets yanked away from him. And then how much longer are you going to have to wait the next time? And then all the while, all that's going to happen is people are going to slowly start to lose interest. And even when you look at Daniel Bryan now, even though the hardest of hardcore Daniel Bryan fans won't want to admit it, he, they, people have lost a little interest in him. You know, Sometimes absence makes the heart grow fonder, but you get to a point where somebody's gone for so long, you move on. You deal with it. You accept it and find something else to get your attention. Now, I don't want to see Daniel Bryan become an afterthought. He doesn't deserve to become an afterthought. He worked too hard and did too much good over too many years to be an afterthought. And frankly, at this point in time, in a lot of ways, he, to a certain degree, has become an afterthought. He really has. Now, I will also have to confess that from a fan standpoint, I do hope that he retires. This is going to sound fucked up, but I don't care. I never do. Daniel Bryan's hardest and most ardent of fans have to be some of the most annoying fucking fans that I have ever seen walking the face of this planet and strolling through the interwebs. My fucking Christ. I... I even, even CM Punk, I don't think, and his fans ever got to this level that it got with Daniel Bryan. I mean, it was a whole different level of bullshit. I mean, this is the guy that people were pitching a bitch about and fussing and cussing about because he didn't even get into the 2014 Royal Rumble. And, you know, it hijacked all the shit heading into WrestleMania 30. And then we get to the next year. And people are wanting to do the same shit again and pitching a bitch and moaning and crying because Daniel Bryan didn't win the damn Royal Rumble. Well, it's a pretty good fucking thing that he didn't win it now, isn't it? Imagine if the company had actually listened to you when you didn't know all the particulars in terms of the medicals. You only know bits and pieces of it. And they actually followed through with it. How stupid would this company look? For the second straight year to have Daniel Bryan win the title at WrestleMania or be involved with the main event scene just for him to have to exit stage right shortly after WrestleMania. It's history repeating itself again. But just the annoyance of when it comes to Daniel Bryan's fans. If Daniel Bryan did retire, it would suck for him. I would feel bad for him. And to me, I would miss him in terms of, from a viewing experience, he's one of the few guys that can actually get a reaction. He's one of the few guys that actually matters. But at some point in time, dealing with Daniel Bryan's hardest of hardcore fans has gotten to be a chore and completely and totally fucking ridiculous. And you know who you are and you know it's fucking true. I mean, for Christ's sakes, in recent days, I've seen thoughts of people talking about Daniel Bryan. I saw one comment on a video I did recently that said Daniel Bryan is one of the biggest stars of all time, and this individual rated Daniel Bryan above Hulk Hogan in all-time mega star power. Did it get this stupid and this ridiculous to where people actually are thinking about that? We've got people still talking about Daniel Bryan comes back, and they put him right back into the main event of next year's WrestleMania like it's no fucking deal. You know, every time Daniel Bryan loses, yeah, even the people that want to deny it, they still get mad, they still get pissed. It's just so many different things. So sadly, maybe this is just where I am as a wrestling fan and just how much I really don't give a fuck anymore. And that's how jaded I've become, in part maybe from doing these videos and having to interact with many of you. But if Daniel Bryan retired, while I feel bad for him, in a way I'd feel happy too. Because I wouldn't have to listen to his fucking fans anymore. And I wouldn't have to listen to the stupidity and the bullshit anymore. You know, for all the people that talk about Daniel Bryan is this and Daniel Bryan is that. The product hasn't changed much one way or another with him on the top or not. At the end of the day, he doesn't fucking matter all that much. And for those of you that think he's truly crossed over and he's some big megastar... I got news for you. You're sadly mistaken. And in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to the WWE, The Miz matters more than Daniel Bryan, and that's a fact. So, yes, I think from a health standpoint, my opinion, Daniel Bryan should strongly consider retiring. From a career standpoint, he probably should consider retiring. And from myself, as selfishly as a fan standpoint, I kind of hope that he does retire. Sorry.